thing is, is I didn't know that at first. You know what I mean? I was only 22 years young. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't know the importance of what I needed to do, so I was getting worked over. And for that girl backstage, they make it perfectly clear. Never mind who you thought I was. I'm Rick James, bitch. <laughs>
and I came up with the verse for Bang Bang on the Chronic album. And, but I didn't write that verse. You know what I mean? That verse was like a very pivotal point in my life when Dre told me like, the way that you're writing is not the way that you're saying it. So it, just, it sparked the freestyle back in me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like to where I was like, you know, let me go ahead and just go handle this without the pen and that pad. And, that was, and that's when the verse of Bang Bang came out. Well, first of all, even being in the studio with Dre, I don't see how you would have an ego because you're in there with one of the most prolific producers there is. It's like, you should not even walk in there with an the ego mentality. You should just walk in there with like, okay, what can I learn? But what y'all didn't expect to see is me on TV with Snoop D O Double G. You know what I mean? That's how I approach the whole situation. For years, a couple years, like people was like, who is that guy? Dre was like, oh, he's just here for me. Like, you know what I mean? He wouldn't put me on blast and I was just writing for Dre. You know what I mean? And like, it wasn't until uh, after Bang Bang and all that stuff where people start really knowing like, oh, that's Nocturnal, that's, that's who he is. And he's the one that, you know, did this or whatever. And then, you know, we start doing the Watch soundtrack and, you know, I never thought that I would, you know, D Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg's making a movie. I never thought that I would have the first single for the movie, like, which was was bad intentions. You know what I mean? I didn't think I was just doing the song. And Dr. Dre was like, hey, knock this, uh, let's do a video shoot for bad intentions. I was like, okay, well, that's cool. Because I never wanted to be in the form for a forefront. I didn't think I was going to be in the limelight like that. You know what I mean? And so, he shot that and he was like, well, how you want the video to be? I was like, well, let's, let's go to a whole brothel. Let's go do something. Let's make a video within a video. And he was like, that's a good idea. So that's how the whole video came about. You know what I mean? It was just a fun video to shoot, you know? And, and then Miss Parker is in the video. She's the madam. She's like, and welcome to Bad Intentions. And Dre was like, why are we going to call the song Bad Intentions? We don't say Bad Intentions one time in the whole song. I said, because if you listen to the hook, there's no good intentions involved in the hook whatsoever. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's all bad, you know what I mean? And so it, it worked out, you know, all to the better, which became one of like, a lot of people's favorite song when it came out, and still to this day, they still play on the radio. It's still one of my favorite songs. You know what I mean? That record was real heavy in the streets. Yeah. Not just LA, but all over yeah. the country. Yeah. How was you feeling at that time? Really, I couldn't believe it. Like, it's like, you know, it's like when Dr. Dre handed me the Chronic album. Like, it was unreal. It was before it came out, he was handing it to me and I flipped it over and I looked. It, it saw Bang Bang, it said Nocturnal. And then it said, it's a feature Nocturnal. And then it looked, it said written by Royal Harbor. And then on Lightspeed, it said written by Royal Harbor because that's me and Miss Rock on the hook. And then The Watcher is me and Eminem doing the hook on that one. And then uh, uh, some LA niggas, me and Cocaine doing the hook on that one. And like, we roll deep, smoke on weed, drink, and pack heat. Society food, you know, that's that's me and Cocaine. The only thing Cocaine said was in LA, you know what I mean? And that put me and Cocaine in the mix on that one. You know, it was, it was everything was unreal until I started seeing it, like, manifest and seeing it on the shelf. And I could actually walk in Tower Records or you know, for those on Tower Records or Best Buy or Walmart, whatever, and just see the stuff manifesting and sitting there on the shelf. But like that, that's when it became reality to me. And then it was like a long, long time, which I didn't even know that Hispanic people were my biggest following in LA. And like, so I would like go to different clubs and everything. And then, you know, it'd be like essays and different stuff just staring at me and pointing out, like, what the hell is going on? Like, are they tripping? Like, you know what I mean? Then they come to me, hey, fool, what's up, fool? Like, Nocturnal? And I'm like, yeah, they were like, let's take a picture, man. I'm like, damn, this is a whole different environment. You know what I mean? Like, compared to what I'm used to growing up in the neighborhood and whatever, like, you know what I mean? Exactly. So it was just like, it, it took some getting used to, but it's all about what you give to people as far as your aura. It's, it's about how you carry yourself. You know what I mean? You start carrying yourself and like you, in a, in a you feel like you're better than somebody mannered and, and people start looking at you sideways. You just carry yourself like you're a normal person, you're good. And that's what's helped me to be able to, to step, withstand a lot of the, the turmoil and different things and beef and a lot of the bullshit that people been through is because I don't walk around like I'm better than anyone. I'm a human being just like anybody else. I just got blessed and God blessed me to be able to, be able to use the talent he gave me to be able to succeed. You know what I mean? 
appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks for watching. Make sure you bang that subscribe button. This is One Book Podcast. Are you mad Blood. about me doing something? Or are you mad because I'm doing something? It's a difference. Are you mad because of me doing something to you? Are you mad at... I said, bro, I don't want to feel like... I, I, first of all, I ain't got nothing against the Turk. Because the next time you at me, when you look up, I'm going to have a dick pic in your oh, DM. Shit. Don't fucking play with... When shit go down, speak on that shit right then or it's out of it. It should be null and void. You shouldn't even have no type of nothing. You should be you shouldn't be able to do shit. You feel me? Yes. Yeah. Like I wasn't homegrown material. But I tilled the soil. Right. I helped plant seed. Yeah, you've been there. Cultivate vegetation. Working yes. right alongside. And now that's all of that done and everybody's still eating.